I'd like to thank uh, Westport Hotel for uh, having this event and also just to point out that we're actually launching this book in conjunction with the Rolling Sun Book Festival so many thanks to them as well and uh, we just have one more person that has to speak um, so if I could ask uh, on Taoiseach Mr Enda Kenny to come and say a few words thank you very much Good morning this is a surprise <laughs> uh, I'm in a job that's full of surprises thank you Abbott thank you Tom thank you Liam uh, it's quite a few years since I was in, in, the, uh, in the convention centre on the occasion of the Eurovision Song Contest when Riverdance first unfolded. And when, when Michael Flatley and his partner stopped at the end, there was a spontaneous burst of applause and emotion from people. The reason for that was not because just because of the excellence of the dancers and the performers. It was a recognition of something very old that was suddenly given new life. Yesterday I launched the National Conference for Men's Sheds in the site of the workshop of the old mental hospital in Castle Bar, the lunatic asylum as it was in the 1880s. And the opposite of Aretha Franklin's song about sisters, this was the brothers. In the sense that here were groups of men from all over the country, young and not so young, retired, experienced, isolated, disillusioned, depressed. Gone behind the glass shield of retirement, that bulletproof shield that says, I'm not finished but I can't speak to you. The men's sheds have broken that mould, shattered that glass, that these people can come back out and say, yes, I've got a contribution to make. I've seen this in community employment schemes around the country, where when the conditions were that there were insufficient numbers to make up the numbers, people would say, ah, sure, go down and ask Johnny, he's able to do something. Or Mike over there, maybe he might be able to help as well. And suddenly you find that instead of just being an appendage to numbers, Mike is able to make a cartwheel and put that steel band on that circle of timber and burn it on in a way that it won't fall off when it's, when it's warm and the timber contracts or won't warp the spokes in wet weather when the pressure is exerted against it. Our John's actually a Thatcher, and reflected in the words of Seamus Heaney, with the white pronged, with the white pronged fork that holds the golden sheaves together to give shelter to the people in the house in Inish Torque or wherever it might be. These are things that I think uh, I can reflect as a politician in very difficult circumstances, where our values haven't changed but the true value has come to the top. I see this in the sense of Irishness, of humanitarianism, of community, where you attend, sadly, at funerals for one reason or another in so many places around the country that uh, the entire community comes out. In rural Ireland, they do the one-way traffic system, they take over the management of the farm, they do the work that has to be done that is unceasing. It's the Mehel come to the fore again. I tried to preach this to the Europeans about the Mehel concept. We don't sit at the table of 27 as unequals, but we <coughs> should help small and small to work with big in the interest of the common thread of our humanity. I liked your phrase, Abbott, about the transformation from troglodytes to tourists. I think that's a great line. If you don't mind, you might hear it again if I use it. <laughs> you get full, I get full recognition for that. <coughs> I have regarded um, Tomas here was a year one show. He was in Colossus the Father a few years ahead of myself. And of course, the, the gift, if, they, if, if a gift they taught us or unleashed in us, is the capacity to explain things. People uh, might not be aware of individual issues. Thank you for the readings of the poem. 
the poems. I thought you did exceptionally well. See, I have always regarded Liam Lyons as sort of the Leonardo da Vinci of the camera. But you are right, Abbott. It is the same as the great painters with a brush. He who wields that lens tells the story. And what's happened here in this book is the coming together of something old that Riverdance made new and something old of the words of the poets transformed into the pictures that he's put here. The Lions archives, I'm quite sure, rank up there with the McMonigals in Killarney, the Kennellys in Killarney, the, um, the um, um, Wins in Castle Bar, or Father Brown's collection, any of these. I guarantee you, in six decades hence, or ten decades hence, when those archives become a common feature of an Ireland that is long gone, it will of course be, uh, be evidence of a master at work. Now, the age of television will soon be over. You might think that, but communications in all its forms now is handheld. The tablet mightn't work because the chip could be gone off. The, uh, the iPad might not work because it's not charged. It may not work because somebody up there could be listening by satellite. <laughs> <laughs> but the book will always open and the story can always be told. And that's why I think that this book, going for the Westport Aurora Partnership, is a brilliant opportunity for people to buy a Christmas present and send it on to those whom they respect. I always regarded poets, and I love the old few words, Tom, not these kind of ones, but the ones that are structured and sculpted. And um, Seamus Healy, for me, God rest his soul, was, uh, was one of the great word sculptors globally of his generation. And when he would say things like, the ploughed field swallowed up the whitewashed gable, and darkness came again. You can understand that the men's sheds, speaking of the forge, speaking of the thatcher, speaking of the people that he knew, it's important to have had the experience before you can put the words to it that really mean something to you and that are given life by the pictures of a master like Hugh Lyons. I attended out at the 40th anniversary of the foundation of Gorta in the Royal Hospital in Kilmaine a number of years ago. And Seamus Heaney was speaking there, as was Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of the United Nations. Seamus Heaney um, had written a poem all those years ago for the initiation of Gorta, means hunger. And uh, he, he described why he wrote the poem. He said, on the, far, on the small farm in Derry, he said, I understood what hunger was, but I didn't know what famine was. And he described hunger and his understanding of it. When you go to the bucket in the morning, to feed the sub calves, you had to put your hand in the milk, put it to the cow's mouth, would follow your hand back down to the, to the, to the bucket and learn to drink. Instinct and hunger brought about life. Coffee and Anne said, how am I to follow this? He said, well, when I was elected Secretary General of the UN, I was elected on the basis of reforming the United Nations. And six months after I was elected, he said, I attended a major international conference. And I was five minutes into my contribution, and a man stood up and he said, excuse me, you were elected on the basis of reforming the United Nations. If had more time to reform the United Nations than God had to make the world. <laughs> How was I to respond to this, he said. And so he said, I thought for a moment, and then I said, ah, yes, that may be so. 
But God had an advantage. He walked on his own. <laughs> sometimes I'm up in that big chair in Dublin. And you sometimes wonder whether you should work on your own or whether you should work with the collective collegiality of what you have to deal with. But I will say this. This is a brilliant book. I was asked what poem of um, Heaney's was my favourite when he passed away. And I didn't really have time to think of them all, but I chose Lovers on Aaron. And that's describing uh, what Keats wrote in his Ode to the Sea. You who have your eyeballs vexed and tired, feast them on the wideness of the sea. It means if you are troubled and you want to reflect on issues, sit halfway up a mountain or sit down beside the sea and think things out and you get an answer. But Heaney, Heaney described the waves on Aaron coming ceaselessly, endlessly, like shattered glass, and as he said, sifting from the Americas to embrace Aaron. This book is, a, is an endless sifting of who we are in words from those who went before us, in pictures of somebody who is with us, use it for the purpose for which it's intended. Buy it, and give it to your friends, for helping little kids like Liam spoke about there. Thanks very much.